later on. And then once the laning phase is done, you're just hungry to fight. Darkseer is like, yeah, I pressured you with Ion Shell in the lane. Now just give me 15 minutes so I can get my mech and Guardian Greaves and Blink Dagger. And well, I could also use a Vanguard. And I, I mean, I could maybe also use, uh, you know, a pipe. That'd probably be pretty good, too. Well, you might as well just let me get the Agonims now so that we can kill this carry. Am I am I too far down the rabbit hole of hating on Darkseer? Or, I mean, where, where no, he, here? he feels very odd. He is a, um, when you need a pipe hero, he's just the, uh, like, Underlord got nerfed so hard. I think they wanted a pipe versus sanking Leshrac Warlock. Yeah. So they want a pipe mech or pipe crimson. Uh, and Darkseer is just one of the better heroes to do that. That's In terms fair. of the heroes that do it, he is probably the best at actually dual laning, right? Like, that used to be Darkseer's thing, is he would dual lane with uh, Night Stalker or Tusk with the Iron Shell, Spear Breaker, and he was just, like, unstoppable. Um... But yeah, I think uh, Boom ID have a very easy last pick. They can just, whatever this is, they can fully pick between, like, Spectre or uh, the Luna. A lot of good options. Well, Trent. There's still Life Stealer? No, he's banned. I'm calling Boom ID regardless of this last pick. The Wind Ranger just really sealed it for you? Yeah. I mean, it's not that they don't have a win condition. But I think for clutch gamers, it's like they have to execute so hard. Like they have some pretty good initiation, but compared to Boom ID, their team is just way less scary. And wow, an Ember Spirit of all heroes, but really good damage to put into this team fight. I actually like this Ember pick a lot. They don't have a lot of big time magical bursts to just destroy his shield like reliably. So that'll be good. I'm assuming it's going to be a, a Mage Ember. But I suppose it could go either way. But they've got a pretty good mix of damage types now. And they don't have a lot of control outside of the Disruptor. Like, Disruptor is amazing against Ember in a vacuum. Well, he's, no, actually, I would say it's the other way. Like, I, I would say Disruptor is actually kind of notoriously bad against Ember because Ember, any good Ember is going to do the... Like, he's going to dash during the glimpse. And he's not going to get caught. Yeah, okay. All right, no, I, I guess that's fair. I but if, if he you combos can, up, it works. If you have any kind of setup, like Disruptor can be that guy that locks him down because you have the static storm like before he can do anything. But I, I see what you mean. It does it does kind of swing both ways. Yeah. But uh, to your point, though, like Disruptor is actually good against uh, Ember as long as someone else initiates. So if they hook shot and then there's a stack storm, Ember's just dead. Yeah. So, okay, there you go. Um, I think uh, Wind Ranger is also actually pretty good against Ember Spirit, too, in my experience. <laughs> She's okay. Just I think cause, like, Wind Ranger is just hard in general. I think that's my yes. my big time beef. Is it's not that the hero can't do well. It's just you need to have those oh, oh two hero shackle moments fairly regularly for this hero to look impressive. And if you can't do that, you know there are a lot of other heroes that give you give you more for less. <laughs> She's not uh, a bargain. No. I don't know what the inverse of a coupon is, but. Tax. A tax, yeah. Price hike. You know, yeah. I uh, I read a story this morning that made me think about you. No way, dude. Get out of here. Yeah. I'm, uh. Guys, uh, cover your ears if you don't want to be grossed out a little bit. Because, you know, we got some downtime here. So, uh, the, the Blue Jackets were, were eyeing a prospect, right? This player, young player. Seemed very good. Very excited about him. But then suddenly, things started going bad. He thought it was like depression. He thought it might have been cancer. He was starting to slow down. Lethargy. Loss of appetite. Significant weight loss. And a pale face. Andrew, do, do those symptoms sound familiar? Get out of town, dude. Is this going where I think it's going? Oh, it's going where you think it's going. It was. I, I'm trying to find the exact size because it was pretty gross. He it was like a, a, it was like a multiple pounds tapeworm. It was a huge tapeworm. Oh my god! It was a twenty-five inch tapeworm. Twenty-five inch? Yeah. That's not even that big. I didn't think that's that's two feet. Okay, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. That's, yeah, that's pretty big. That's a big worm. Holy yep. shit! Professional okay. athlete. Yep. They thought it was a. Uh, so he probably, probably had it for like multiple fish. years, like ten years or five years or something. 
How long? What did you say? How long do you have it? Yeah, like five years or some shit. I think they. I think only like a year, like a like six months or eight months or something. Whoa. It just started really taking a toll on him. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't have that same. Ex I didn't feel that bad. Like I mean, I didn't feel <laughs> good. There were a couple times where I got like real nauseous unexpectedly, and it just kind of like went away. I was like, that was really weird. That's not normal. But I don't know. I guess it's hard to evaluate. Maybe it's because my diet was so bad. Mine wasn't very healthy. You know, all that all that Red Bull and vodka just kept it down. Up top, Fervian. He's actually in a lot of trouble here. Is this a first blood? Almost. They're not quite going to get him. They needed one more auto attack. I think they actually could have committed for it. But they don't get the kill. That's peculiar. <laughs> peculiar. Oh, that's peculiar. So we're going to not have the clockwork with the Darkseer. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Yeah. Thought what maybe that would be the plan. What happened there, MacGyver? Well, my idea was that the clockwork would be here, and he would be cogging the waves, which would force them from outside of the tower, and that would help negate the impact the Warlock has. Because Warlock just hides back here and constantly heals the Ember. So you can never actually pressure the Warlock and force him not to heal the Ember. Yeah, I... I see what you're going for, but I just don't know that it's enough pressure down bottom. Gabby caught by the stun combo. A few more right clicks, and that'll do it. The first blood for Boom is drawn, and it will go the way of Holcomb. Now, one thing they have going for them, though, as you can see, is that they're just constantly spamming Iron Shells plus the uh, Thunder Strike, so they view this as an easier form of harass to execute. But I don't know. I, I'm... I mean, to be fair, what would Disruptor do against Leshrac sinking? At least Clock has a chance to have an impact in this lane, yeah. whereas Disruptor would pretty much do absolutely nothing. I mean, for what it's worth, they are slowing down this Ember Spirit an okay amount. Um, he only has five last hits. Definitely not farming ultimately, optimally in the first two minutes here. Yeah, and they got the wave pulled out too. But this is the kind of stuff they need. Run at him. Down bottom, Gabby. Kind of getting dove. Boombox will be nearby, though. And uh-oh, Hulkum. Picking Oops. a lot of tower shots. That's uh Man, it's so hard to toggle off tower now. Because, like, ever since they changed the timer of the aggro, you, now you tank, like, two shots. When you used to tank, like, one or none. Very punishing to dive if you screw up with it. Good. <laughs> Good. Nerds. I'm, I'm okay with that change. I got no beef. It used to be too easy. That's true. Tower used to feel like completely useless, and since then we've had armor added in an AOE. Mm -hmm. We've had the uh, like the mid lane been squeezed in, so the tower basically covers the whole damn high ground. Now I love my tower. I used to watch those Pyrian Flax videos and laugh when he joked about no one giving sh a shit about tier one towers, and now I, I very much give a shit about my tier one towers. They're we're, like we're a little piece of home. Now. Home is where the hearth is. Hearth is where the stone is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh oh, Fervian. Nah, he still has his shield. He's fine. What do you think Euphara means? <laughs> I don't know. Why he asked Chad again. Oh, the car here, no! Fervian, Euphara. Oh my god. It's like regen enough HP basically to live there. Whew. Maybe that's just his name. Fervian, Euphara. Could be. That you should you fucked up, dude. You should have named your kid for him. I mean, Aki named his kid Illidan. Did that's, he really? That's bold, dude. Yeah, did you not know that? I think I saw that headline. I, I can picture I can see uh Boomy or Bomby or whatever her name is holding the baby, but I for some reason didn't digest the name. Maybe I thought it was yeah. a joke. His name's actually Illidan? It's actually Illidan. What do you what are you gonna call him for short? Illy? Ill? Uh, that's a pretty badass name. Bill Illidan. Ill. He's ill, dude. <laughs> It is sick. It's in Sweden too, so they're they're really gonna respect that shit. Yeah, they would know Illidan. Illidan. Yeah, I'm impressed. I don't know. That's almost too epic. It's like naming your kid Jesus. You know, it's like ah. It puts some pressure on him. It's like I, I name. Yeah, I would name my kid Malfurion. You know. Oh, that is kind of a badass name. Now that I say it out <laughs> loud. You say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Nice kill mid. Mid lane boombox size. Then you get sued by Blizzard for copyright infringement, though. And yeah, then you have the first kid man. to officially be owned by a corporation. 
Get a little tattoo stamp, barcode. A <laughs> barcode and property. Go scan of yourself at Walmart. Blizzard Entertainment. It's only infringement if his uh, last name is Storm. Wow, Keskin's gonna die for that bounty rune. Is he? Oh, Bold yeah, maneuver. Sure Not gonna be able to heal through that one, Warlock. He didn't even get it. Well, Ember is uh, definitely recovering a little bit. Still at the tail end of the CS uh, for the cores, but that is the great thing about Ember. He plays just fine from behind at this stage. He flash farms pretty darn well, as long as he's just not getting killed over and over again. Um, Dude, how about the Sand King, though? He yeah. is way up there. He's the highest farmer on his team. He was uh, second in the game just a moment ago, and he had his arcane boots queued up for the longest time, and he just bought treads. He said, I'm not leaving this lane. I'm playing some Moo Dota right now. He's porking. And, well said. Uh, he might be dead. No, now, he's good. He's got treads. They don't have detection? <laughs> he's got treads. He <laughs> killed this man. Well, if they had a sentry ward, they probably could have, but... He's faking that he had cogs. So, like, even though Boombox didn't have the cogs, he positioned himself like he had them, and he started moving on the Sand King. Pretty smart. He ukes him, and I think it's going to set up for Gabby to get the kill. But now FBZ pops the Exorcism, the Spirit Siphon, and kills the Gyro. Double damage, Lesh. Get spotted by a ward, though. Wind Ranger needs to push this hard. Has the ultimate. Got the wave dead. Go, go, go. My track has to run in. Well, Yol died up top. I was watching this little fight down bottom with the exorcism, but everyone just kind of disengaged. Now Boombox wrapping around the back. There is a TP. Wow, it's FBZ a win got caught. It's because Boombox was sneaky with it. Gabby. Oh, it's a shackle with a latch on a tree. That's a dead that death like profit. Great rotation. He legitimately looked disconnected. Just like standing there, no exorcism going, just lobbing right clicks into a tier one at like 80% HP. Well, that's because you started reading the book at chapter five, dude. If you saw chapter four, his exorcism play, literally, it was a really clutch play from Boombox, honestly. The DP was pushing the tower. Oh, my exorcism's ending. She walks over to the tree, and then all of a sudden, this this clockwork just wraps dude, around. She threw like three more right clicks before it was over. Oh. Or after it was over, I mean. No way, dude. She. It would just get, just give the clockwork a little bit of a, a little I bit of I was props. watching his wrap around. It was, it was questionable. Like it? I thought it was tight. I mean, I'm su I mean, it was a great play from the clock, but I'm really surprised it worked. Ah, okay. I see what you're saying. That's my issue. I don't know why DP just stood there for so long. You think that so so you're just upset that he got a couple greedy auto attacks. And look, Gabby Gabby yeah. saw it and said, "Here, pal. All right, here's a little pick me up for you." That was nice one. It's another one. Oh, back in the mid lane, Ajit has his ultimate again. Maybe hoping to hit one more wave, knock that out. Oh, he has the arcane. Oh, there's so many power shots. That's pretty tight. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. I bet you... I feel like he's going to kill this warlock. If this warlock stays anywhere nearby. Because, like, power shot is just brutal right now. Hey, you better run. Are you living vicariously through this uh, Wind Ranger right now? Yeah. Those fatal bonds, though, it hurts. He's not shooting these. Oh, she didn't pop the arcane rune. That explains it. This makes so much more sense. I was like, why Why are you not just spamming right now, bruh? But he really wants control over the lane before he does it, which is a good choice because you want to use it with your ultimate. So that's where he's going to go for it. I like the way Death Prophet moves her arms. Very flowingly. Very majestic. Like, they're not even attached. Just, ah, yes, I'm a ghost. I'm floating about the plains of another existence. Yes. Beautiful. I wish I could fly. They're smoking, oh. though. Let's see what the ghosty lady can do. She's got a less rack to back her up. Odd jit. He's going to wind run a away. Difficult catch. Okay. It's a uh, failed smoke. Also, Warlock now level six from spending some time mid. So, Kez cute. You Farah. Dude, this less rack is insane. <laughs> he just runs in and goes to that little cute edict play. <laughs> Gotta love edicts. We have a uh, about to be surged helm creep here, I'm sure, with the golem up. 
Here. All right, give him the surge. Send in the golem. Ah! Oh man, what a strat. It might actually get the death profit. They have to rock because of it. DP turns and just gets destroyed by Gabby. The call down as in a first and they kill the warlock golem. This little golem is so much stronger than the warlock's big golem. It's actually embarrassing. <laughs> Mud golem clearly better than infernal golem. Hey man, his stun's on a, on a re repeatable timer. And if he dies, he turns into baby golems. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be a sick warlock talent? On golem death, it turns into two lesser golems that don't have a gold bounty. Great idea. It shouldn't be summon a golem on warlock death at level 20. It should be the golem summons golem shards. I'm going to write Ice Frog after this. Can you remind me? Yeah, I will. I will tell you. That's I'm into that change. I hate talents that require you to die to work. I actually think that they're pretty stupid. This one, I would agree, and the Undying one. I think they're just conceptually. Why? I mean, the Undying one, I can get behind. Well, I mean, I get it when I play Undying, but I just I would rather that talent be almost anything else than a mechanic that forces me to die. It's the same thing when I played World of Warcraft. I had Spirit of Redemption on my priest, and it was a dumb talent. You had to die for it to work. <laughs> Stupid mechanic. I'm gonna be bold about this one, Trent. Look at this. Oh, he gets hook shot. Nice work from Boombox. Does not fall for the pump fakes. And Skylark says, "Hey, nice hook shot, but uh, I'm gonna need this one. Thanks. I got. I need my boots, bro." Oh, who are you liking so far with how this is playing out? I what still, I still think the Boom ID lineup has a little more power if they can get on the same page. I think so far they've looked a little scattered. I think Clutch have gotten slightly better. Like, their movements have looked a little better. You know, I think Skylark is actually putting a lot of pressure on with this Darkseer, more than I was giving him credit for in the draft. But uh, I think Boom ID can still step it up. And once they get on the same page, once this Ember starts coming online a little bit, he does have uh, his boots of travel now and picks up an Arcane Rune. So... Like, once he gets the Maelstrom, that's where I think Boom ID is going to start looking a lot more scary. But uh, yeah. we'll see. we got to get there first. There's also the fact that the Sand King is matching the Darks here. Uh, instead of buying his Blink Dagger, he wanted to just keep laning and keep pushing bottom over and over, so he went for the Hood. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that initiating tool, but it's also because he doesn't have heroes to fight with him if he bought an early Blink because his Ember takes so long to come online. But Warlock, yeah, about to go down. He's going to get the pulled the Gyro back. falls as well. Damn. That's a sick grab. That's way more important. Yeah, they'll be happy to grab that, and even just towers here. They'll get the tier one mid, so this opens up the radiant jungle a lot. Dire not that upset about losing that tier one in the top lane, at least uh, relatively so. But yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, it's exactly uh, what you said with that Sand King timing. Once they come online and decide this is our time to five man and really open up this game, I'm not. I'm still not sure what the clutch solution is. But at the same time, Wind Ranger's farm is very impressive. So far, she's executed well. Skylark has done the same. So at this current pace, I, I think Clutch are going to be able to stand their ground when those big 5v5 fights do happen. Gyro going for the standard build. Drums coming after uh, the phase boots. And even Clockwork, he's uh, working on the urn. DP in kind of an awkward spot down here. Disruptor trying to counter initiate and might actually be successful. DP taking a lot of damage. Gyro trying to come in and finish the job. She has some spirit siphon, but gets pulled back. Still able to live longer than planned, but Gabby will not be so lucky as the Ember Spirit jumps forward and finishes him off. Looks like Skylark died elsewhere as there was another fight going on. A lot of these simultaneous skirmishes in this game. Feels like that's the third or yeah. fourth time that's happened. It feels like last game, too, where it's not a lot of five-man fights. It's just kind of individuals um, kind of breaking out into engagements. I guess just because everyone's TPing and certain people are rotating or some people have TBs, some don't. Some are mo more mobile than others. Yeah. The uh, Ember Spirit fight down bottom. It looked like it was really good for the Radiant, but losing two around the map, it was actually a favorable exchange for Boom ID. And you tally it up at the end. And Ember now with a double damage. He's really not far away from that Maelstrom. Obviously a big uh, damage item for him, but also a big farming tool. I 
I think uh, I'm more in on the dire side, winning this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not feeling too great about the darks here in this match, honestly. I don't think they have a lot of good combinations. But this works out. The uh, hook shot helped kill the Leshrac. Hulk him. But bottom oh. laner, they're going to go for the glimpse. Oh, they stunned him with the rocket so he couldn't jump away. Wow. That was huge. Well, that, that was perfectly timed. Is one way to shut that hero down. Um, Sand King able to burrow straight down to the low ground. Back to back pickoffs, though, for Clutch Gamers. Puts a little bit of a dent in that net worth lead. Shows a sign of life. The Ember Spirit was starting to pull away, so really a much needed kill there to stall his momentum. And DP, she's got herself the Yule Scepter. Yeah, she needs that BKB before they can really head in towards tier twos. I'd like to see them rotate towards top, try and fight and take that using the Golem. Uh, once they have the Blink Dagger on the Sand King, I think that's what their play should be. Dire of Vision right now. They see up near the Ancients. They see mid. They see top. So they are. It looks like they're prepping for this area, right? Judging by where the wards are actually placed. Radiant only have Vision down on the bottom half of the map. So overall, they are probably going to have an advantage if we go there. And they have an Arcane Rune on Ember, which is quite scary. Mm -hmm. If he's leaving, though, she just to goes snag bot. Snag it from the clock. They uh, see all these rotations top, so they just ditch. So the ward's paying off right now for the side of Boom ID. They're going to be more efficient now because there's a four-man movement just doing nothing, whereas they're all moving down, farming these camps, and then smoking. But it was spotted by the clockwork as there is a ward on the high ground. Mm -hmm. So they know the smoke is coming for the bot tier two. Look at that clock circle. Got him. He called it. No way they can fight, though. Yeah, I think both teams are uh, just going to end up dodging each other. Locked on op opposite quadrants of the map. We're going to scan. Connects. Where they are. And will they go back towards the pit in time? They're going to try and camp that high ground. Or uh, Death Prophet is, actually. Oh, she sees Clock, but the Yules is not in range. Yeah, they grabbed that tier 2 in the bottom, and now they will be able to rotate up top in the fen. Dexter might be in trouble. Uh, might have to Yule. Yeah, they're just saving their Yules now in case they try to TP. Yep. It's an easy pick on Skylark. You know, gets left behind. Ends up being a great trade for Boom ID. They get a pick and a tower out of it and don't really lose anything themselves. Lincoln's now queued up on the Ember Spirit and BKB coming for the Wind Ranger. That's a pretty hilarious homing missile. It's a little present. Hey, Trent. Yeah, what's up? How many items are there that still have... Like, seeing Maelstrom get changed really bothered me, just as an old-timey nostalgia thing. You know, like, that was Mithril Hammer, Gloves of Haste, Recipe, for what? Eight years? I don't even know, but Seven yeah. years, something like that. How many items are left that have had that same kind of, like, iconic, you know, like, Mask of Madness is Helm plus Recipe. You know, that finally got changed. There aren't many of those OG items left, like Rapier is a big what one. What BKB? BKB, that's another big one. Uh-oh, we're going to hold this analysis, though, as there's a huge initiation. Yol gets popped right away. Ajit low, but Skylark with a big back wall. It kills the Lesh, but there's no follow-up damage. It doesn't feel like, at least. Boombox getting chased down as Ember tries to finish him off, and he will. The tower falls. Even though it's a two for three, it's big cores left on Boom, and that exorcism will heal the DP back up. So you look at the Yeah, recap. that is one thing. Without exorcism, their sieging is pretty bad. You know, even Luna right there, that tower is just completely gone along with the racks. But uh, obviously the game would be different if you had a Luna. Just uh, one thing that has been prioritized by certain teams recently is the idea of just you want to win one fight and really go hard uh, on objectives. Yeah. Uh, Sheepstick has been the same for a while. Oh, yeah, that's another good one. Like even Aghanims used to be a lot different. That used to be like the, um, the Mystic Staff instead of the Point Booster. Now MKB's way different. Man. 
Do you think rapier will ever be changed, or is that the forever iconic item of Dota? Will it always be Demon Edge and Relic? Probably. I think they'll ever come out with a a better late game item than Rapier. I was just thinking what the uh... man Shadowblade has gone through a lot of recipes. Jeez, dude, Shadowblade has been changed a lot of times. Yeah, Lothar's. Yeah. Even its name changed. Damn you, Lothar, and your copyright. Oh, Gabby. Oh, Whoa, missed the chains. The fiery wow. bolas. Unusual miss there. Mm -hmm. I don't think they would have fought. There's a backstab in behind with Skylark and Boombox here. Four staff out on the Keskut, but then Hookshot in. Keskut. Oh, he's looking for the Vaughn's run. Oh, he makes it out. He tries to smoke away, but it actually doesn't work. Now they get Skylark on the oh, other side. Oh. Lesh gets picked off by a stray power shot. I don't even think that was aimed at him. But a nice set of bolas on two. Secures the kill on Boombox. Now follow up stun from the Saint Dream onto Odd Jet. It's a two for two, but now Gabby finishes off, or pardon me, Skylark finishes off the Death Prophet. It will be Damn. clutch gamers uh, that take this fight. Shit. Actually, it was aimed at him. What an animal. That ward on the high ground for the glimpse. I see is. you. See you oh, later, alligator. Oh, they just won such a huge fight top, and then to lose that engagement is very painful. But they had no golem. They just came back uh, off cooldown. Yeah. Wonder they're going for the uh, the slow instead. I like that uh, he held the talent until 15 as well. I really don't think that uh, talents are worth more than uh, the abilities on certain heroes, and Wind Ranger is one of them. Clockwork is the other one that I do the same thing. Yeah. I do that. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's a Unless I really need the armor. I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of the movement speed on Clockwork. I feel like movement speed rarely pass. Like, movement speed sick in the laning stage, but. Once you're actually like level six and seven, eight roaming around, I don't feel like movement speed has much of an impact past level ten. You mostly just hook and it, you know it depends. die. It kind of depends on the hero. Uh, for clockwork, I, I could agree with you. It feels oh definitely better than for, it is. Yeah, for a lot of heroes, movement speed's amazing. I just mean for clockwork specifically, movement speed's pretty bad post level ten. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I totally. I thought that was a blanket statement. I was like, I don't no, know, dude. God, like, no. I get fifty movement speed at level twenty on Dazzle all the time. It feels pretty fucking good to me. <laughs> I'm a big fan of movement speed talent in general. Like the the Dark Willow one at fifteen. Whew. Nyx Assassin as well. Fifteen. Yeah. Clock's pretty necessary. unique in that regard, I guess, because he has such a a good gap closer that's so, such a long distance, and the nature of Cogs is like you don't need to close that gap the same way a lot of other heroes do. Roche getting kind of low. They did use an exorcism for this. It's only got a couple seconds left, but they might still be able to finish it off. Kind of a heartbreaker that that didn't latch, but Roche goes down. Radiant, he got grab it. it, and Boombox gets the Aegis. It's a straight steal. They kill Thurvian, and now they're going to kill FBZ to boot. He did not have an exorcism. It's a pretty nice epi, but it's really just the tickler, and uh, now a glimpse back onto the Lesh. They are just getting cleaned it's up, dope. picked apart like a couple of crabs on a lobster sundae. Four down, they've still got the Aegis, and they got Roche, plus this tier one tower, maybe even two. It's clutch gamers all of a sudden, Trent. They've woke yeah. it up. Once I had that BKB on the gyro coffee, it makes the fight so much easier. Uh, didn't even need to pop the one on Ajit. Things looking great. And Skylark having a really good game despite not having any mobility. He has no blink dagger. He just bought boots. Because he's a dark seer, so you don't necessarily need them. Dogs. Yeah. Or his boots? Are his boots just in his stash? I don't even know. I don't think I've seen him with boots this game. I mean, I think yeah, I think he's just been stashing it. Yeah. So they get two towers off that uh, as well. Ember Spirit still leading the farm, but that gold graph—it's like the Big Dipper. That's a big swing. It's like a 10k swing in the last five minutes. That's nuts, though. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. Perfect Garo timing going back though. towards the Agams too. Perfect timing to get into that Roche. Like, DP's ult was just expiring as Roche was going down. I'm a little surprised they were able to grab the last hit on it. I guess yeah, uh, the Static Storm kind of helps because it just creates that chaos and still does a little damage to Roche. But. Well, right near the end, too, it does way more damage. Oh, yeah. 
I forgot about that mechanic, actually. Yeah, it's one of those weirder ones. It ramps up, huh? Yeah. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. Wow. I completely forgot that existed. Classic. That's why it's okay that if you throw down the sacks and then glimpse someone into it, you still get a lot of the damage in. Okay, so that's the idea. That's very smart. I hold oh that ice frog. <laughs> I'll tell you. God don't make no junk. Up top. Speaking of junk, it's Ember Spirit. Let's see here. Oh daddy. Perfectly timed. Static storm, kinetic field, rocket. Very little opportunity for Furvian to react to that one. That is how you gank an Ember Spirit. And he does not have a buyback. 700 gold short. So we've got a good minute here with no Ember and the Aegis still in tow. How do you respond to this as the Dyer, though? Like, your Ember is the one who's supposed to be answering, you know? Like, he's the guy that's supposed to be pushing these other waves and everything. And once he's dead, it, it kind of falls on the Sand King. So now he's way down here pushing. But the five man certainly should be hitting high ground. There's no doubt. And yeah, the pings come out. It is time. So, Hasted Windranger for this fight. She just wants to run in there and hunt somebody. Just get a free pick. There she goes. That was a very and quick Yules, though. Homing missile flying in. This tower going down pretty quick. They force a glyph. And I think that'll be enough for clutch gamers. Tower at half HP. They will reset. No buyback on the Ember. Blink dagger on the Dark Shear. Dark Shear. I guess that's just enough for them to say that they're very confident in uh, their pickoff potential. They'd rather, like, draw them back outside the base. Still trying to farm up a few items. Yep. Hmm. That's funny. They think they might have smoked right down. Actually, they haven't smoked at all. They're all just completely envisioned, but they don't have anything on that half of the map. Dire Vision has still been pretty superior this game. Um, they recently left that ward down bottom when the Sand King was there. They still have one lingering from the Roche fight, whereas the Radiant are just kind of only that one ward. Yeah, looking to perhaps set a trap up here. There's a haste rune on that Wind Ranger. Ah, uh, Jit with uh, Aghanim Scepter queued up. Uh, fairly core on Wind Ranger, I suppose. But turns her into a little bit more of a carry. Gabby has the Aghanim Scepter, so now looking for the Satanic. Missing uh, bottom. All right, smoke time. Following the line. All on boombox. He backs up. Stay as close as possible to his team, but Wind Ranger now has the haste rune activated. But the Aegis has run out. Who are they gonna That's find? a tough target. An FBZ. He pops the BKB, but so does Odd ah, Jit. Very spread out fight, but they oh fight God, Furby and up top. Stop. He goes down immediately. Warlock falls right after dropping the rock, and now this Lesh is isolated. We'll have a Yules. Sand King jumps in with a stun, but Power Shot flies through. Lesh will go down, and unless this Sand King and Death Prophet can have some heroic plays of epic proportion, this will be a team wipe. No detection for the Sand King, so uh, that will actually be his get out of jail free card. Oh, he blinks right on the gyro. He blinked up to the high ground. Okay, well. Made a fool out of you and a fool out of me, but it's a five-man wipe. And a big swing in favor of Clutch Gamers. Nearly 3K going their way. Yeah, push, push, push. Go, go, go. Get high ground. They have a wave up there. Wind Ranger's on the way. Man, Skylark, like, the Lincoln Sphere just does nothing for Ember. He's getting vacuumed into Centaur Stomp. And he just has no protection, and then the Stack Storm comes on top. High ground siege, buyback used. And again, the value play here for clutch gamers. They force a buyback, get a tier three, and they just back it on up. They're going to value town. Yeah, I think this is correct. Just go back and uh, get the shrines. Uh, looks like Ajit wants to wait for his uh, Aghanims before he alts the shrine, though. That's a first class to cool down. To Flavor Town, Trent. Hell yeah. 
You know, I saw an article a couple weeks ago that was something about how Guy Fieri doesn't actually like all of the food he tries on diners, dashes, and dives, but he has to pretend to like all of it. It's like, well, that makes Hard sense. Life. A lot of that food looks awful. <laughs> Here's the three pound cheeseburger with more grease than an entire whale. Uh oh. That's a dead a warlock poor, and a poor double warlock. My damage. God. DD Agonims. That was gross. Yeah. Dude, he just evaporated. Guy wants to go hit a tower. But get me up there, guys. I'm going to that Rax. I bet it's a deceptively awful job, though. Having to eat food that's gross and then hype it up like it's actually good. I don't know, dude. I oh, bet... dude, Alpha Wolf 2? Oh, look, look, at, look the at the damage. This. It, he's basically got a rapier right now. Yeah, actually. I, it's just insane. It's a big setup, though. Gabby getting low. He goes down Oops. fast. And he ends up getting popped. The rest of CG need to retreat. FBZ with the BKB. It expires now. Skylark makes it into the tree line, but Boombox clipped by the stun after the Yules. Yeah, those ghosts are doing a lot of damage. Skylark actually gets away. He's just too fast. Abuses that movement speed difference and heads home. Warlock uses the ult to interrupt the TP from Boombox. And Odd will just take that opportunity to TP out with the BKB still on. All said and done, they will still lose the clockwork. So no additional buybacks. They did get the the ranged barracks. Yeah. So still okay, but it is a gain for Boom ID for sure. I think that's a win for Boom ID. Pretty pretty handedly, honestly. The fact that it was only a ranged racks, like they needed some sort of a fight, and I just can't believe how fast they blew up that gyro. He didn't have a chance to pop his BKB at all. It was a bit greedy, his posturing. Like maybe Maybe because he knew that the glyph was still up, so he didn't want to pop his BKB because they just glyphed, but a bit rough. Yeah, it's just scary. I think you got to be a little more proactive with it. Uh-oh, Leshrak, Hakam, he's dead. And maybe some more follow-up here. Boom ID seem like they want to commit to this fight. Skylark in the front line taking the bolt of the damage. Ajit on the run. Jackal actually connects, but now a buyback from Skylark. Objects already died. Now the PKP from Gabby gets used. Clutch gamers are just tossing away this entire lead here, Trent. Sank back and forth. Back and forth. Makes it to the low ground. It's been a big swing. They're gonna get a recovery kill. That kind of helps, but you know, it was once almost like an 8,000 net worth lead is now only about 1k. It's a, it's exactly even. I'm, I'm just surprised. I thought they were going to be able to end this with relative ease, and instead, it's kind of a reset now that we're at 33 minutes. Yeah, just getting the better uh, catches here, and FBZ is rather terrifying at this point with the BKB and the Shivas. Now it's got the 500 health, so all that damage mitigation going through another 500 HP is going to be really hard for them to deal with because they are mostly AOE focused on the side of Clutch Gamers. Uh, the only hero that's theoretically balanced around single target damage is the Wind Ranger, and uh, can't really stand toe to toe with the uh, DP because she just gets soul siphoned every time. Mm -hmm. Unless her BKB is running, but I mean, then the BKB is running from the uh, DP, and the the physical damage from a Wind Ranger is not that scary with a Shiva's guard. Yeah. All fair points, and we can't forget about the Ember Spirit. He has been forced to itemize pretty defensively. Lincoln's now into BKB after the Maelstrom when, you know, Mage Ember would really like to be just be uh, doing damage. Uh, grabs that Spell Amp Talent at level 20. I'm very curious what item he wants to get next. I don't think Radiance will be in the cards. Hey, that BKB satanic. is huge. That I think the BKB is the one that's going to really bring Boom ID back. Because he has just been pretty much useless in these engagements because of the stack storm. He's been caught every single time. So, Fervian should have uh, a little bit of a better time now. Both teams smoked up. Moving in opposite directions, though. Pretty unlikely we're going to see them cross paths. Hakam. They could just settle for the shrine. They don't find anyone. 
Well, now they find Roche, actually, so that works. That flare just went over the pit. Yep. Yeah. Right, sorry, that flare went over this ward, so they know they're at the pit. So Dire Team can make a movement over there. They don't have a smoke on them. They have a gem, so they'll know if they're spotted moving over. They don't really kill it all that fast. I mean, they can definitely bring it down, but Roche only about half HP. This is Roche 2, so only Aegis and Cheese on the line. Refresher shard still to come. Now getting down to about 30%. Boom ID need to figure out how to initiate this if they want to go for it. There's the hookshot from Boombox trying to buy time. them back. And up on the high ground, they've isolated another. The rock flies. Roche still pretty healthy, and this fight's going to move outside of the pit. It looks like a good fight for Radiant. The Embers already had to buy back. But it does go down to the Dire, and Aegis ends up in the hands of the DP. So after all so while that... while we were watching that, it looks like Wind Ranger got the pick onto the uh, Ember. Yeah. And then a buyback was used by the clockwork so it's a victory for boom id very unfortunate their ember has to burn his buyback but to secure roche very much worth it he's just gonna get octarine coming up next but that's aegis and cheese gives him the gold advantage once again neck and neck here still though Let's say he didn't even get a chance to pop his BKB, so he must just get caught uh, unaware of the Wind Ranger's positioning. Plus, she can just blink shackle, and um, a lot of times you don't have time to react. That's why she tends to be pretty good against Ember, uh, in my opinion. I just finished the Aghanim 2 right before that fight. Finally getting some real damage going. I mean, you literally do 30% more damage with your ultimate once you have Aghanims. It's crazy. That's a pretty significant buff. I always think of the yeah. cooldown, but you're right. The damage reduction is the uh, next big step there. Removes debuffs. Well, a quick pause here. Well, look at that graph. Looks like a heart rate monitor. Quite the swing. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoopsie. It's a real Johnny Jamboree over there. Bingo, bango, bungo, baby. You know, another thing I really appreciate about Dota, Trent, is What's that they, they haven't changed the map too much. And I know you're thinking, whoa, a Roshan. Yeah. But they've tweaked it. You know, like Han tried to make that watchtower map where it's like three lanes, but it's vertical instead of diagonal. Oh. Dumb. It's just stupid. Why? You're just changing stuff just to change stuff. You know, what? what's wrong with the map being, uh, like, on now, a diagonal? Let me ask you a question here. If you could, would you rotate it if you were playing Dire so that you were on the left-hand side? Like when you're playing Radiant? Um, you mean, like, the kind of the idea that Radiant have an advantage just because it's natural to kind of attack yeah. that way, left to right? Yeah. I think I would. I think so. I think if I like, could just choose every game, like, do I want to play Radiant or Dire this game? I think I would generally choose Radiant more often. But like, yeah, and like, what if when you were Dire, though, it just 180 and it just looked the other way? So here's know. the hero I always think of when this happens. Wouldn't that be I'm kind of a mind Wind effort? Huh? Wouldn't that be kind of a mind effort? Just like, because you're both looking no. the same way and it's like inverted or whatever? I think you just get used to it. Yeah, maybe. But like, like when I play Wind Ranger and I'm on the Dire side, it doesn't feel as natural to like, like if there's a, a target, like look at the Wind Ranger right now. If there's a target here that I'm trying to shackle, it, it's harder to like see the tree and everything. Whereas if it's there like on this side of the tree, I'm like, okay, I get like that perfect angle. You know what I mean? I don't know. It just feels so much more natural. Yep. Feels good. Well, you know. I think we'd all be down. That yeah. would get my compendium money. I wouldn't hate it. What that levels your compendium up to? Uh, what have I worked it to now? Hold on, let me see. 
Uh, 22. Ooh, you're quite bad, grinder. guys. From level one. From level one. I'm a grinder. Slow and steady here. Both teams just grouped up as five. I wish they had some of those mega MMR tokens for solo. That would be awful for most people involved, though. How's that fair that there's someone on your team who's just shittier? <laughs> That's true. Right? I don't know how you balance it. I I have no idea how you calibrate. Guys, I swear I'm really good. Why is there a Herald player in our game? I used my token. <laughs> I used seven of them at once. I'm gonna gain 800 MMR. Carry me, please. That's actually a good point. That's uh, I think that's why it's party. Yeah, uh, you're right. It has to be because then they can queue you up and make it not, you know, make it a challenge. Yeah, you're right. That would be awful for everyone else. That one guy is just. <laughs> it would be awful for the guy too, because everyone would just be like, "Why are you in my game, God?" Incoming. Oh. I mean, we had double downs though. Where's double downs? Why aren't those back? I don't know. I had mixed feelings about this. See. The double down is cool in concept, but the double down also ruined a lot of days of my life. Like if you queue up, if it's if it's nine in the morning and you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna play a game or two and then get get to work on stuff. If you double down on that first game and you lose, fuck. Yeah. If you double down on your first game and lose and say, okay, I just gotta play one more to at least try to eat back at that, and then you lose game three. Dude, that's a that's a day gone right there. <laughs> that's a, a day of well, I gotta make this back, and then you just go plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus two, plus two, plus one, minus. It's it just oh, it's awful. So I'm kind of out on the double down. I'm glad that temptation's not there because that shit was brutal. Oh, boom, my dear, I'm moving in here. Maybe they're gonna do their own little double down, just trying to end this game. I mean, they still have ages. Where's the fight? You guys want to fight? You got a lot of green diamonds at the top of the scoreboard. I see some ulties prepped and ready to go. But they have a sight almost finished on the and that's what they're waiting for. From downtown. So the Eon disc has already been used, and Lesh will be going down as soon as he comes back from that Yule Scepter. See you later, big guy. On the backside, though, we're watching this Gabby fight. Looks like it's two skirmishes. Now the Warlock Golem comes. Gabby kind of hanging on for now. The Lifesteal helping. You can feel that Aghanims. He's beefy, but it's not going to be enough. Two buybacks used by the Dyer. So it was kind of an even fight before that. I was only able to catch about half of it. So it's a two for two with the buybacks. Obviously, net worth gain does go the way of Clutch Gamers. Yeah. They, um... They just focused the Disruptor. The uh, Ember Spirit just hopped right on top of him with the BKB and just started fighting him. And the Death Prop was there as well, so they kind of focused him down first, then they rotated back to the rest of the engagement. Whereas Wind Ranger did the same thing, tried to focus down the Warlock first, but Warlock was still able to get off the ultimate because it doesn't care if you're going to pop your BKB. I can still dump my ulti at the very least, so that is one advantage between those two supports and these, uh, in the way these engagements are going. So now it's a 5k lead, and the Aegis uh, obviously gone now, though as it, we're close to coming back. Yep, grouped up is four. Sand King kind of on the way here. Still a while on Roche. Hmm. Oh, Boom ID back in control. Death Prophet's almost into that terrifying level 25. You can get the haste or the spirits. Either option, honestly, quite strong. It's like having a level 4 ultimate. You know what's surprising? Death Prophet doesn't have an Aghanims. She feels like an Aghanims. She would be a really good Aghanims buyer, you know? It kind of fits her. The more HP to go with something like your Shiva's Guard or something. Yeah. She'd be into that. I don't know what you would make it do. Her I would want a new ability. Her ultimate's already cheesy as hell. Just making the ultimate better seems so silly. Yeah, get an ability like the cool Agnums do. Hmm. What Spirit Siphon? How about Spirit Siphon just becomes toggleable and AOE? So you just turn it on and it Spirit Siphons people around you. No, that's boring. New ability. I don't know what, but something. Um. Probably ghost related. 
I think that they should just remove Bedlam from uh, Willow and then just give that to DP as her new spell for the Agonims and make it a ghost. Yeah, okay. How's that? I also want Death Prophet in every game. <laughs> hey, but she have to buy an Agonims. You know? I think she should get like a Wraith form and she should become like a, like turn into a ghost and become untargetable for a certain amount of time. Oh, so you just want to take one of uh, one of Willow's other spells and give it to Death Prophet. Exactly. <laughs> okay, cool. How's that sound? Very original game design. Thank you. I try hard. Um, Although a fear would be lore appropriate. That's true. A fear would definitely be good. Just fuck, give her Terrorize. Man, now we're talking. Just agging him. All right, let's go. Pop that ulti. There we go. BKB's ready to rock and roll. What if what if the ghosts had mini stuns when they auto attack? That that would be broken. Look how fast those things go, man. Uh, that's true. They go real. They go real quick. Look at these things. Oh my gosh, it's disgusting. Imagine eight more of these level twenty-five. Okay, every other ghost has mini stuns. Here we go. BKB used by Furby, and he jumps in and actually oh, does not it. really do much. Yeah. Big damage coming back the other way. But whoa, it's an epicenter for the ages. It repels the Radiant, but they lose their Warlock. Out comes one of the Golems, Gabby getting low. He has a buyback available. The Warlock not going to be so lucky. Good thing he had that Death Golem. He didn't actually get to use his ultimate. It was a nice yeah. combo from the Dark Seer to back wall everybody back into uh, like the gyro call down. Uh, did they did they finish the tower? They did. So they got the tower, forced a buyback. Pretty good for Boom ID. A little more economic damage. Yeah, Lestrax doing his thing again on the shrine, not showing himself, just slowly killing it. Very irritating. What a wiener. Here I go again. What if then I have to right click it a few times because it's not enough. What if Crypt Swarm feared? Like Queen of Pain? Yeah. Yeah. New ability. Come on. Ice Frog. I know you'll come up with something cool. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not good with ghost lore. Ghosts are lame. I think it'd be cool if she became like ethereal, like her ghosts, like the same color, but like her size, and then she could like pass through terrain. That would be kind of cool. Uh -oh. oh, mid lane. Nice oh. shackle. That's a big grab. He does have a buyback, but pressure down bottom. Ember Spirit. He's chunking. He does have that CG so slow without exorcism, though. Like, it is painful. Yeah. That's really what started the whole decline for Boom ID, too. Because they were way up after they won that big fight top, and they were looking to push in top, but they couldn't keep going because they didn't have the Exorcism. And then they just have to keep waiting for it. Like, they take Roche, but they have to wait for Exorcism, and Ember getting picked off a lot was what really slowed things down. Yep. Let's take a look at some items. I, th I still think this new item chart is too cluttered. It's hard to tell. It just looks like a cluster of items. I miss the old one. I, too, miss the good old days. Having a fast metabolism. Uh-oh, they broke the Lincolns. Furby in. He BKB'd. Is it going to be enough? The rock comes down. He's getting low. One more. Wind Ranger. She gets it. Those arrows fly in too fast. Now the exorcism, it's been used. He's gonna get hit by the rocket, but no, he uses the BKB. They've lost their warlock, and the dire could be in some trouble here, Trent. Gabby trying to stand his ground against the Death Prophet, but buyback now used by the Ember. Saiyan King also back in the fray. They need to be a little bit careful, and they will sound the retreat. Well, this, this Wind Ranger. That's a dieback. That's a dieback, but Ah Jet, he could be low as well. Wind Ranger down, instant buyback used there. Now stun on the way. That'll proc the eight or uh, the Eon disc is now a hook shot flies across. Hook him. Not going to be able to survive this onslaught as now the Sand King recently respawned in a lot of trouble. Dust it up, but Burrow strike the low ground. Oh, they're going to find the Death Prophet. They need the shackle. 
Oh, she went to the high ground. Whoa, look at that. Refresher. It's a refresher orb on the DP, BKB, as well as the exorcism. It's back. There's the little hex. She gets turned into a piggy the other way, and it's just not enough. Skylark's there with the wall, and well, just like that, Trent, I think Radiant are pretty close to winning this thing. Sand King comes in, Epicenter not quite on the mark. And Clutch Gamers maybe one step away from making this a 1-1 series. Yep. I would say it's over. No buybacks coming out here. Well, Lesh uh, and Sand King just got gold for theirs, but... Yeah, Clock I don't, bought a Meteor Hammer. He's ending this shit. He's I don't done. think it matters. I, yeah, I think you're right. She's a Danzo. There they go. The both buybacks, though. The Meteor Hammer. A little bit of that damage gets mitigated as the towers get burned down. There's the Burrow Strike in, but the hook shot. Beautiful cogs, and these two dire heroes will be sent back to the grave. And this game will end. 1-1. One, one, a very back-and-forth matchup. Look at that graph. Yeah, that was a, one of the most back and forth games I've seen, honestly. Like, Boom ID were so far ahead, and then now it's up to CG. It hasn't even updated to being across the top line. Yeah, it's first Boom was ahead, then they threw it and Clutch was ahead, then they threw it and Boom was ahead, and then it went back the other way. Ember dies back, and Clutch start to pull ahead, and <laughs> just like that, they kind of end it. Yeah, I think um, Deathrob being your only building hitter can be a bit rough. Yeah. That graph just so telling of how that game went. Only a 5k net worth lead when it was finally over. Odd jit though. Very impressive Wind Ranger performance. Showing us what that hero's all about. 37k damage done. The same as the gyrocopter. I'd say that's quite impressive. All right. So what do we got now? Uh, do we get tomorrow two more games, right? Or two more series? Yep. Four matches tomorrow, assuming no uh, reschedules or anything. It's Water versus Neon Atomic, and then Execration versus Geek Fam. So our second series should be quite tight.